Good evening, good evening. Uh, this is uh, day two, counting the Omer. Uh, not day two, goodness gracious. We're at day 31. Man, am I, am I doing my thing right here? Who we? All right. Good evening. Good evening. All right. Day 31 of counting the Omer. We're here, we're here. Hey, hey guys. Uh, <clears throat> hey, what's up, Murph? Man, hi, uh, give me a, uh, a thumbs up. You and the family feeling well, okay? All right. Hey, Linda. All right, okay, all right. I wanted to make sure you guys are doing well. Uh, I'm uh, definitely pray for you guys tonight. Um, and uh, give it a few seconds. Y'all have to, uh, excuse me. I'm getting in here. All right. This is day 31. I, I, I just thank God for what he's doing in the kingdom. He's teaching his people how the kingdom works. And I tell you, I have been seeking the Lord for some things for myself. And um, he answered my prayer by sending me someone else's, uh, someone I knew sent me a uh, video for me to study. And so uh, it just was right down the alley of what I've been asking God for. And um, let me tell you about it. And I'm going to be brief real quick. When the enemy attacks you, he can only attack you if he has a legal right to do so. That's the only way he can attack you. If he has legal... Hey, Big Pudding, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers online. Happy birthday, Big Mama. Big Pudding. Hey, Big Mama, Big Pudding. <sighs> That's my mom, y'all. Y'all wish her a happy Mother's Day while you're on here. Um, uh, the enemy... Any attack that you have on you, if you didn't pray about it and rebuked it and all that, and it still is there, is because the enemy has a legal right to attack you. So with that being said, that's why the blood of Jesus is so powerful. That's why it's so, the covenant, the new covenant is so much better. Uh, we just have to... Uh, Remember that. So, and I'll get into that later on. I don't, I'm not sure if I'm going to get into that in the, in the counting of Omer because um, I want to make sure I'm versed enough to really go into it. Okay. But I do know this. We must pray and we must put our petitions into God while we're in the spirit realm. Okay. All right. Gotcha. So, Let's get into this. We're in Psalm 30, uh, Psalms 119. We're in day 31. I mean, day 31, yes. And we're going to be at, uh, starting at verse 65. Let us pray. I got to pray. Father, I just thank you right now for who you are, God. I thank you for what you're doing in Kingdom Application Ministries. I thank you for each and every believer that's on this line, God. I thank you for those that don't believe that's on this line, God. Father, I pray right now, Father, that you draw them by your spirit, Continue to draw them by your love, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Father, salvation is nigh even unto us. It is close even unto our lips, oh God. Father, all we have to do is believe that your son Jesus died upon the cross for our sin and that he is your son, oh God, and that he died for my sins, your sins, oh God. And believe that with all our heart. We confess our sin and we confess it, God. We shall be saved. Thank you for salvation and making it so easy, God. Thank you for getting us to a place and, and not make it complicated. But God, you wanted even the, the babes to understand how this works. And so, Father, we bless your name, oh God. Father, we thank you for now that you have given us salvation, God. You have placed us in a position to become your sons and daughters, oh God. You said <laughs> even those that confess your name. So, Father... As we walk this counting of the Omar out, as we examine ourselves, as we look at look at ourselves through the eye, through your lens, oh God, through the lens of this word, hold the mirror of this word up to our life, God. Let the, let us see what's in us, Father, that's not pleasing to you, God. Father, that you may show us 
that we may come to a place of repentance. Oh God, in repentance, oh God, Father, that you may cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, Lord, let not one, let your word come forth this evening, God. Father, let it bless, let it touch, let it heal, God. Let it deliver, let it set free, God. Let it bring revelation tonight, God. And I just thank you for it, God. I thank you right now. Bless each and every home that's represented on this land, God. Be a hedge of protection around them, oh God. Be their shield and buckler. Let not any virus come near them, oh Lord. And Father, we pray for the healthcare workers, oh God. We pray for the healthcare workers that we know that's on this line, God. We lift up sisters, brothers, cousins, neighbors, classmates, oh God. Father, they are on the front line, God. Keep them covered, oh God. Father, let them walk according to your will. And if they're doing anything that's not, that's just, that just don't sit well with them, God, give them the courage to stand up, oh God, and stand on your word, stand on truth, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we just thank you and bless you for it. In your son Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, 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 glory to God. Amen. Carmen, you see what I'm talking about? Amen. <laughs> anyway, I had a talk with my brother earlier and we had a chance to go over a few things, but uh, I was explaining to him some stuff and I uh, know he can see it now. Uh, Psalms 119, verse 65. Let's go. Let's get into this. Thou has dealt well with thy servant, O Lord, according unto thy word. He said, teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed thy commandments. Don't you know you first, many of us have came to Christ and many of us have walked away from Christ. And after we got out there and got oops upside the head a few times, he said, okay, I better come back to the house because ain't nothing out here for me. This ain't right, God. I know it's got to be something more to life than this. I'm just going to talk about Lorenzo because I can't talk about it. I, I, I know Lorenzo. I got back out there and I'm telling you, I said I never wanted to be that old man in the club that, that I used to see on the dance floor. You know, that one that had that old move, that old move and all the girls would sit back just laughing at him. But one, it was one or two of them that really liked him, that liked him, but he was after his money, uh, some thought. But anyway... <laughs> I said, I never want to do that. So I looked up one day and I was in the club and I was like, oh, wow. I, what, why am I here? Why am I here? I was 34, 35 at the time. I was like, why am I here? There's nothing in here for me. What, what? It's one o'clock in the morning and there was nothing in the club. I, let me get my tail out of here. I said, there's got to be more to this. And so I left. That was it. Did, I did the club one more time. New Year's Eve, 1999. Man, I tell you what, <laughs> that was the worst night ever. Anyway, <clears throat> young lady I brought didn't want to dance. Young lady I asked to dance, I mean, at midnight, the lady I asked to dance, I danced with her. She was winking at the girl that was dancing across from her. Whew, what a night. <laughs> so I said, that's it, I quit. Okay, Lord, I hear you. So I've been in the house ever since, amen. All right, here we go. He said, teach me good judgment and knowledge for I have been, I have believed thy commandments. I ain't going to tell you about the sugar I got in my gas tank and all that other stuff along the way that I realized, oh God, I got to do. Woo, yeah, anyway, let's keep it moving. Verse 67, he said before, oh, and it was a, it was a maxi at 1997, uh, no, 1987 maxima. Sugar in the gas tank, couldn't figure it out cost me thousands of dollars to figure it out, but got it going and traded it in. Oh my God. I had to leave that club thing alone. But anyway, here we go. He said, uh, 67, I don't know what happened to you, but you know what happened to you that made you say, okay, Lord, I'm coming back. Cause we got some, uh, the people on this line is pretty well, you know, above the age of 35. So we, 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 y'all know what I'm talking about. Okay. All right, here we go. He said, before I was afflicted, I went astray. See that? When I left my mom in them house and I went outside and I was able to do my own, I went astray. 
But when God began to allow the enemy to jack my stuff up, I brought my tail on back home. He said, but now, the servant, he said, but now I have, have I kept thy word. So you have to get back into God's word because guess what? When you get out, you recognize that, okay, I ain't got no business up in here. Y'all seen Skeeter, Skeeter in the club, that guy that approached you, good, let me buy you a drink. That's the moment you say like, I ain't got no business up in here. Okay, and he got some friends. Same thing. But he said, but now have I kept thy word. See, you, that's when you know you ain't got no business in the place where you're at. So, but now I have I kept thy word. See, if you notice the whole theme, he said, Lord, teach me. Teach me. Show me your commandments. That I may understand your statutes. And he, the psalmist goes in right now. He said, but now have I, ha, have I kept thy word. He said, thou art good and doest good. Teach me thy statutes. It's like the... Uh, it's like the, uh, the prodigal son. He ran off when his money ran out. He kicked it. He had friends of galore. But after he kicked it and ran through all his money, he wound up down there in them pits. He decided to come back. He said, Lord, I, I'm going back to my father's house. Even the servants ain't better than I'm eating right now. So you have to go through some things. Be afflicted. God got to allow some things to happen to you. Let you know that guess what? You're safer over here. Okay? He said, thou art good and doest good. Teach me thy statutes. Okay? Their heart. So then, after he said, teach me thy statutes. Teach me thy pre He said, teach me thy pre statutes. You want, these things don't come by naturally. You have to get revelation about the statutes. And I'm glad I'm saying that. So if you, I'm going to stay right here for a minute. But, Put your finger right here and flip over to Psalms 34, okay? Because that's where we're going next. He said, Thou, the proud have forced a lie against me, but I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. You know the haters, the haters that hung out in that environment. They, they told lies on you all the time. He said, their heart is fat as grease, but I delight in thy law. He said, it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. Let me tell you something. If God would have let everything go your way in the club, you probably would have still been there. Amen. It was good that you were afflicted. You know what he said? Spare the rod, spoil the child. You know, I got two, I got two daughters and I love them to death, man. I tell you, I talk to them. I give them chores after they, you know, I give them some stuff to do after they messed up. I had them do some physical exercises after they messed up. I put them in the, put both of them in one of my shirts after they messed up. But you know what? They continued to mess up because it wasn't, it wasn't, they weren't afflicted. <laughs> but oh, when I, when I spanked that tail, <laughs> it was good that they were afflicted because, <laughs> because the behavior changed. So God is a father. And we are his children, okay? So guess what? If he love you, he gonna chase you, okay? Just bottom line. If you, love, you belong to him, he gonna chase you. So you might as well just, just cut it out and come on in anyway. He said, it was good for me that I've been afflicted that I might learn thy statutes. He said, the law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. We have to learn what, how to put the value where it needs to be and once you get into God's word, you, you have to understand this. God's word, his whole purpose for choosing Israel was so that he could bless us, so that we, he could keep us in health, good strength, so he, that he, can, um, he could show us off to the world so that the world may see how good God is to us and come after him. That's the whole purpose. But we have to learn that his word, the law, is precious, more precious than any amount of money you can get your hands on. Yes, I said that. You, you got to learn how to accept the gift giver and leave the gift. Because the gift giver has all the gifts. Just hang out with him. Okay? It's, it's, 
It's not swift. No, it's not. It's, it's, it's a slow pace, but it's long and steady. Amen. So here we go. Go with me to Psalm 34. I told you, I, I, you, you have to have a relationship with God in order for this revelation to be brought forth. And I'm telling you, you have heard this, this, this psalm. It says, I will bless the Lord at all. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. <laughs> Y'all know that one. And his praise. See, Ann ain't in there. But it says, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, yeah. He said, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Now, I am sure that this psalmist came in from out in the world. Okay? He was out there at one time. But he came back in. And he said, oh, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually to be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear and be be shall hear thereof and be glad. He said, "Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt His name together." See, you got to understand something. When God then brought you out of something and picked you up from a low place and set you on high for you to be example for the people at church to hate on you. <laughs> Because they hate on you at church when you're living right. <laughs> because the blessings of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. So I have to tell you that, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. For I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked up to him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. You have to understand something. When God brings you out of something, then the word will begin to mean something to you. It will, it will mean something down in your soul. It will scream out and then you will make a boast in the Lord, okay? He said, oh, oh, he said they looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. He said, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles, when you cry out to God and he deliver you from all your troubles, now you understand how precious is the Lord in your life. You understand how good that word is. You understand how, how, how he keeps and how much more it's better to serve him in, in the house of the Lord than to be at the, out there kicking it, okay? You understand that you get to understand those meanings. He said in verse 7, he said, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. There is some promises because you serve the Lord. He will deliver you. He will bring you out. He will, I don't care. Oh, it rains on the just and the unjust. But let me drop a little nugget in here. <clears throat> if you go back and you remember when all your stuff was breaking, when all your, you, you had to spend money on the, on, uh, uh, I'm playing money on this. You had to spend money on that. I bet you if you do the math, you'll look back and see that if I really added up, it was the amount of the tithe I should have been given to God. See, you don't understand. You're going to serve somebody. You're going to give a tithe either to God or you're going to give it to the enemy. You ain't got no choice. It's either on this side. It's on that side. It's not right down the middle. Oh, let me tell you. Oh, well, I'm just, they just a good person. No, there is no good people. God is the only one that's good. You're either going with him or you're going without him. Okay, so you have to understand something. In verse 8, he tells us, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. You got to try him. Try him. Don't wait till you get to a place of affliction to try him. Oh, then, well, we need a rifle. revival. No, we don't need a revival. We need a state of repentance. He said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they seek the Lord, shall not want any good thing, and they shall not want anything. You don't want for nothing when you're going with God. Let me say, and I like it what he said in verse 11. 
He said, come ye children and hearken unto me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Ain't that what we've been asking? God, teach me your statutes. Teach me your commandments. Teach me your, uh, teach me your precepts. Lord, teach me how to live this life. And he says in verse 11, he says in, uh, he said, verse 12, what man is he that desires life and loveth many days that he may see good? But let me tell you how to teach. He said, I'm going to give you some examples. This is what happens. This is what you need to do. He said, keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. What he's saying, don't be backbiting on folks and stop lying. Okay, don't let deceitful words come out of your mouth. Okay, he said, verse he said, number three, depart from evil and number four, do good. That'll get you over there with God. That's how you keep in his commandment. He said, seek peace. Okay, and then don't only just seek it, but run after it. Make sure you seek peace with all men. He said, for the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. You have to seek the Lord. You have to, that's the, wait, 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 you want them to teach you? There you go. That's the rules. Now start applying them to your life. Start applying them. It's easy. <laughs> you have to come to grips with yourself and start applying them. That's all. You got to come to grips with yourself. And so in that, in that context, keep Thy tongue from evil, thy lips from lying. I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. It says, thy lips from speaking God, thy lips from, uh, from lying. Depart from evil. Don't be hanging around with evildoers. What's an evildoer? Somebody that plans to do evil all the time. Or just in that moment, they plan to do evil. Get away from them. Deuces. What does evil look like? Evil can be old. Oh, they're going to rob the store. They're going to pick somebody's pocket. Oh, I'm finna go take him for his money. Whatever it is, get away from them people. Do good. What I mean, do good. You can figure that. Do, do the dishes more often in the house if you got a bunch of people there and you hate doing them. Uh, be nice. Extremely nice. Smile. <laughs> Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes in the Lord are upon the righteous. Look where they are. They are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. When you walk according to God's word and you call on his name, he will be right there. He said, come, try me, old taste and see that the Lord is good. And first thing I got to do, okay, in order for me to see, I have to trust him. I have to trust him. Oh, okay. He said, thou has dwelt well with thy servant, O Lord, according unto thy word. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have I kept thy word. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. Father, I just thank you right now for giving us the strength to keep your word, O God. Father, let no sin beset us. Let no sin befall us, O God. Father, remove it far from us, O God. Father, let the blood of Jesus blot out our iniquities, O God. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father, we are sinners, O God. And Father, I heard your servant Paul say, when I would do good, that that I would do, I find myself not doing. And that that, that I would not do, I find myself doing. Who can help me? Who can save this wretched man like me? Father, who can save us? None but your son, Jesus the Christ. Jesus, hear our cry tonight, O Lord, and keep us far from evil. Keep us from the sins that so easily beset us, O God, Father, that we may walk according to your word, according to your commandments, according to spirit and in truth. For we know that in this hour you seek of those, you seek us, Zion, the remnant that walk according to your word and walk in your spirit. In your son Jesus' name we pray, amen. This has been Counting the Omer, day 31. Let us go through the blessing. Let us bless our homes, our house, and let us bless God. It says, blessed are you, God. 
king of the universe, who made us holy with his commandments and commanded us on the counting of the Omer. God bless you tonight. I pray that this word touched your life. I pray that you, if you have not tasted the Lord, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. What do I mean? I mean, eat this word up. Eat it up. Keep your tongue from evil, lips from lying, depart evil, do good, seek peace, and run after it. For he is the king of glory, and he shall come in. God bless you. You have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow on the counting of the old murder. That will be day 32. And I tell you, the Lord is moving and, and getting the job. Done. Okay, Linda. <laughs> All right. Uh, appreciate you guys. Thank you for coming out. I, I thank brother, my brother Raymond for joining in with us. Thank you, sir. Uh, Sister Terry, you jumped in there late, but God bless you guys. If... Um, if uh, you got any questions for me, if you got any, I'm telling you, don't hesitate to ask. Don't hesitate to ask. Inbox me, uh, and I'll, I'll I'll do my best to get to you. All right. God bless you. Love you. See you tomorrow night. I'm Pastor Henry of Kingdom Application Ministries. God loves you, and I love you too, and there's nothing you can do about it. Good night, all. God bless. <laughs>